Hey everyone, this is Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today I'm here with you for a dyeing experiment because I honestly don't know what the outcome is going to be. I'm going to do some cake dyeing starting with dry cakes of a tightly wound ball um, and a more loosely wound cake, which is in the loose version is the kind that I've used in my cake dyeing tutorials. I have a large pot here, and the only reason why I have the steamer insert is that I'm going to use it to submerge both of the balls so that way one doesn't have different coloration for being at the top of the water. Um, I have this dye bath which is currently just water and vinegar. There's 18 cups of water um, and I chose that volume so that way the water level would just come above uh, where the steamer insert is. And to these 18 cups of water, I added 3 quarters of a cup of white vinegar. I want there to be some color variations, so I want to use a lot of different colors in um, this dye mixture that I'm making. So I'm going to add this with some brown Wilton's paste that I made a long time ago. No idea what the concentration of that would be. I'm going to add, I've got some reds that are close to the bottom. I'm using this to use up a lot of the excess dye that I have around the house. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when I'm mixing dyes, it's handy to keep a uh, work around, but it's also nice to have some paper towels or something so you can get a sense of what the color is like. Um. Bunch of blue. I told you before that blue and red absorb at different rates. So that'll also aid in getting some good fun color separations. Oh, it's looking pretty uh, black. Let's add some neon blue. Lots of dye today. Okay, so this is looking to be like a deep bluish color right now. But what's funny is, so I placed one of them on the paper towel, and already you can see the dye separating um, as the colors move. So that's why this method is really fun, because it really, I'm just going to use up this red. There wasn't much in there. Um, see, this is the problem when you have like a gazillion half empty <laughs> batches of dye, eventually you want to use some of it up. Alright, let's see how our color is going. Alright, it looks like, oh, sorry, we've got still got a bit of a bluish hue overall. And because, oops, black, three, four, We've discussed in the past about how black is made up of many different colors. And so therefore, you know, it, it does have a tendency to break as you're dyeing things. I'm getting food coloring all over my hands. But yeah, it looks like we've got a fun blacky blue face, but who knows what it all there you go. You can kind of see that looks very black, but up towards the edge, you start to see some more of the blue. Cool. All right. Now that I've dyed all over my hands, um, I'm 
I'm going to add the dye to my pot. And I'm going to rinse up the cup a bit. There we go. And now I am going to turn on the heat. So like a medium heat cover and wait for it to come to a simmer. We're back and we're at a very soft simmer. So I have my two balls of dry yarn and I think I'm, oh they should fit this way. Should fit that way. Let's see, I'll just plonk them down. And then uh, use this for, or actually I'll use this to submerge them. That's why I have it. Right? <laughs> so this isn't boiling bubbles right now. This is air coming out of the yarn. So we'll see, I've never cake dyed where, in this way where I've completely submerged the yarn. Um, you know, I've always used some kind of spoon or something to submerge it. Uh, it's kind of a shame that we can't actually see what they look like at the moment, but you know, I will come back and check on it and every once in a while remove uh, the strainer. That actually worked quite nicely to submerge both of the balls. So I'm going to replace the lid and reduce the heat to low. So we've been lightly simmering for 10 minutes. And I'm going to lift this up for the first time, see what we can see. Whoa, cool. You know, so the tight ball, there's some like light blue patches on the loose ball right here. And you may not be able to see, but there are actually some equivalent light patches that I can see on the tight ball. But it looks like we've got like a very dark, dark color. So, but we don't know what's happening on the inside. So I am going to recompress. Um, and leave this to sit longer. Because don't forget that reds will absorb first and the blues will take longer. So what may happen is we could end up with a white center this time or we could end up with more blue in the center as more of the red may absorb around the outside and exposed area of the ball. So another 10 minutes have passed and I'm not sure if you can tell but the water, the dye is starting to clear. Of course, looking against the entire thing, it's a bit hard to tell. Um, the yarn has been in the dye bath for uh, 25 minutes or half an hour. I'm losing track. Um, the water is continuing to clear, but as we saw from the top, there's definitely still some dye in it. So, but I think at this point there's enough heat here that I'm going to turn off the heat and just let this sit for a while to see if more color will clear. Alright, most of the water has now cleared. Um, you can see there's very, oh, that's hot. <laughs> you can see that there's very little color left there. And again, because the pot is fairly dark, it's a little, probably a little hard to see, but it's in there. But I'm going to use some tongs. And so here is the tight skein. Ooh, oops. Kind of like a fun, cuddly, deep, maroony blue. Set that onto a plate. And 
the rollers fall. Which is somewhat heavier. here is a little off but what I can tell right away is that both of them have this one has some more light patches in the center but there are light patches of that color on the tight skein as well the real question is going to be I mean, what do we have more towards the center and so here you kind of see we've got some blue towards the center I don't know if we will have you know if that goes to white or not and then here, aha, in the tighter skein, I would say that definitely goes to white. So anyway, we will be back once these have cooled off to wash them, to rinse out any extra dye, and then we'll let them dry considerably, wind them on a skein, and which is when we will finally know like what the color differences are. So it's been a couple days, and I wanted to point out one other difference between having a tight wound cake and a loose wound cake. The loose wound cake dries a lot better because it's wound a lot looser. Sort of intuitive, but you know, I figured that I would point it out. Anyway, they are not totally saturated anymore, even though the tight cake is still pretty damp. Um, but at this point, I am going to wind them into skeins in the Nitty Naughty off camera and then show you what they look like. So we have wound our cakes into two skeins and can you guess which was the loose cake and which was the tight cake? Well if you guessed that this was the loose cake then you would be correct. You can see there's a lot more color, a lot of dark color here. There are some lighter bits uh, but they still have a fair amount of purple and blue mixed in. Um, I think that this skein is totally gorgeous. Um, the tight skein is pretty also, it's just in a different way. There's a lot less dark color and it very quickly transitions to being a pale, very pale blue, a hints of pale purple with flecks of darker color, making it completely different. So these still have a lot of drying to do, and I will show you them again when I've twisted them up. So there we have it, our beautiful dried skeins from this cake dyeing experiment, where the loosely wound cake of yarn took, signific took up significantly more color than the tightly wound cake of yarn. Now this is what we had expected, because since the skein started out dry, um, the dye would be able to penetrate the looser bound skein of yarn faster. And if you've ever done any type of tie dyeing and you've tied a portion really tight, you know that the dye doesn't normally penetrate that area and you're left with a white mark. But I do want to point out that in the loosely bound skein, or sorry, from the loosely wound cake, that it isn't actually white that we're seeing. Um, here is some white yarn. And these pale, you know, there's tiny, tiny patches that maybe could be considered white. But the rest is really pale blue or purple. So it is still quite beautiful, and you can get great results with this method um, when you still have a tightly wound cake. But I think my preference has to be for the loosely wound cake, making it worthwhile to sometimes rewind the first cake that you've wound from a skein if you're going to dye it with this method. But I will also point out that if you have a tightly wound cake in the dye pot alone, it doesn't matter that the dye penetrates a looser skein, uh, sorry, a looser cake faster if you know you're allowed if you can leave the tightly wound skein in the dye pot longer. So these are all considerations for when you decide to make your own attempts at cake dyeing. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you for watching this dyeing experiment.